Morning, boys. Morning. Nick, what do you think of the whole situation? Because I, I, from where I'm sitting, myself, Gabby, thousands and thousands of boxing fans again feel a little bit let down, or a big bit let down, should I stay? Of course, because we've been here before, haven't we? It wasn't too long ago when the uh, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury talks teased yeah. us in a very similar way and ultimately came to nothing. We had a date. We had parties saying everybody wanted it. We have social media back and forth from both fighters saying, you know, all the usual trash talk and everything else. And then ultimately... It's the accountants that uh, that can't get it over the line. They blame the two fighters. Really frustrating once more because the, the difference here, of course, was that, you know, hey, Usyk's not coming off a loss and neither is Fiori. Yeah. These are the two guys at the very top of the street. All four belts would have been on the line the first time in history. We would have had a unified champion in the four belt area of the heavyweight division. And as Frank pointed out yesterday morning, the, the, the opportunity for that to come again isn't so easy because there's four leading contenders in each of those belt divisions that will all now start banging the drum and wanting a shot at, the, uh, at their respective uh, governing bodies' belts. So... It is really disappointing, but let's be honest, as I've just started the chat there, boys, yeah. if we're going to point a finger, who are we going to point to that right now? I'll tell you we're going to point to that. The common denominator that yeah. brought down the AJ fight, that has brought down this fight. I'm sorry to say, I know he professes to be a fighting man and yeah. would fight for free, but this is all on Tyson Fury as far as I'm concerned. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, you know, I think as well, though, like when you see the back and forth on social media and you see Tyson Fury's Instagram and his Twitter and he's like, all right, I'm off it now because I'm getting into camp and the fight's happening... It just shows, doesn't it, that, like, does he even want the fight? Did he Was he trying to call Usyk's bluff by saying 70-30? Then he's talking to Usyk, and then he's like, oh, it's five weeks away, this fight. Am I going to be fit in time? Am I am I going to be ready? Well, the one thing you've got to say, Nick, and, and, and you've probably heard it by now, that, um, you know, Alex Krasik w- w- was very, very keen to point out that he wasn't blaming Frank Warren for the mm-hmm. call-off. Nah, but he, he was obviously blaming the camp. <clears throat> Yeah, and listen, when when the AJ talks broke down, I certainly wasn't blaming Frank Warren. In fact, I wasn't even blaming AJ. In that case, I was blaming Tyson Fury and I was blaming AJ's management team. Those were the parties that didn't want it to happen. And Eddie Hearn has confessed to as much uh, subsequently as well. I think the situation here is both Alex and both Frank Warren have done everything in their power. But what you've got is you've got, for me, you had an even matchup. You had a 50-50. When the fight first got rumoured, when all the belts came together, you thought, right, and everyone involved said to 50 50 this, you've got Alexander Usyk, undefeated, former crew, undisputed cruiserweight champion, done it all on the road. Most people's opinion, the pound for pound best fighter on the planet. And you've got Tyson Fury, the best heavyweight on the planet, the guy that's just, you know, basically finished off Deontay Wilder. It's an easy fight to make this. 50 50 Saudi Arabia. Yeah. They go to Saudi, they fail to do, well, Tyson fails to do a deal with the Saudis, even though Usyk got his over the line. So it's right, let's move it to Wembley. Okay, now we've got to talk about pair split because Tyson is the big ticket seller because he's the domestic fighter. So I'm thinking 60-40 is more Mm -hmm. than fair. Tyson offers 70-30, absolutely ridiculous, but Usyk accepts it. He backs him into a corner. Then Tyson starts talking about a rematch clause. Usyk says, hey, I never asked for a rematch clause. Mm -hmm. Your team did. So then it all starts falling down, and then suddenly... What we're being told now in the last 24 hours is it's the rematch clause that has made this fight fall off. And the reason being, even if Alexander Usyk were to hypothetically knock out Tyson Fury, if this fight was to happen at the end of April, the rematch Tyson Fury would still earn the biggest slice of the pie. How does that make sense? You've already had the guy come yeah. down and say, okay, I'll accept 30%. But if he knocks you out in one round, you then expect him to sign for an immediate rematch in which he will earn the smaller slice of the pie as well. There's no way in the world that Alexander Usyk, as a man, as a fighting man, as an undefeated world champion, is going to accept mm-hmm. a smaller slice of the pie for a rematch of a fight that he's already won. doesn't make any sense. Nick, I think I can inform you with the amount of people nodding their heads in the studio around here. They just about agreed with everything you said, mate. So thanks very, very much for your time. We'll this have morning. Jake Paul to look forward to, I think. Well, that's what I'm just, yeah. I'm just thinking with AJ Fury. I'm, you know, <laughs> no, with Connor Ben. Let's get into the the, the YouTube boxing we, more. We yeah. need a boost. Boxing needs a boost. <laughs> thanks for joining us this Thank morning, you, mate. mate. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. on AM on DAB via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.